Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about post-TAVR PCI, uh, which is frequently very challenging uh, due to uh, difficult coronary engagement, especially with the core valve. Uh, we'll go over some tips and techniques, including uh, using diagnostic catheters uh, for PCI. So uh, we have an 80-year-old man uh, who underwent a, a difficult TAVR with core valve uh, three years ago. Uh, he has a tortuous abdominal aorta. He also has CAD, and 10 years ago, he underwent cabbage uh, with a lima to the LAD and a skip vein graft to DIAC OM1 and OM2. Uh, that vein graft uh, occluded after a couple of years, and he underwent PCI of the left main into the circumflex. And now he uh, presents uh, with chest pain and rolled in a, for a non-STEMI. His echo showed a moderately reduced uh, EF uh, with new lateral hypokinesis. And on cath, um, the uh, lima to LED was patent, and both the RCA and vein graft were known to be occluded, so uh, were not engaged. And here uh, you see the best image that we got uh, with a JL 3.5 catheter after a lot of uh, manipulation. Um, you can see that the left main is patent, but you don't really see much else. The opacification is really quite uh, suboptimal. So uh, because of the presence of the valve struts essentially jailing the coronary arteries, um, coronary engagement after core valve implantation um, is notoriously difficult. Um, now, uh, Dr. Kinney and her colleagues at Mount Sinai in New York uh, published a nice article in Jack a few years ago in which they reviewed uh, coronary angiography and PCI after TAVR. Uh, the review article contains uh, clear algorithms with specific recommendations for how to approach diagnostic cath and PCI after TAVR. It is a great article and uh, definitely worth a read. Uh, but um, here is my take of it and what I usually do for cath and PCI uh, in a patient with a core valve. Uh, first, um, choose a catheter one size smaller than your standard size, and that is because the waist of the core valve effectively creates a smaller effective aortic diameter. So uh, use a JL3.5 instead of a JL4 or an EBU3 instead of an EBU3.5. Uh, and if getting the catheter to actually engage and enter the valve diamond is difficult, uh, you can use the guide wire to cross the diamond first. That's usually easier. And then follow with the catheter uh, through the diamond over the wire. Obviously, be careful that your guide wire does not enter the coronary arteries. Next, uh, if you simply can't get your catheter to engage, uh, you can try to free wire the coronary arteries of the catheter disengaged. Uh, this is called the uh, air mailing technique, and I'll go over some tips on how to do this a little bit later. Um, once your wire is in the coronary, you can use an anchor balloon to pull the catheter in, and then a guide extension catheter to further uh, stabilize uh, engagement. And finally, be very careful uh, when disengaging your catheter, especially if you've engaged the coronary uh, from below. And this is because the catheter can catch the valve strut as you're pulling it back. And after it catches it, the catheter can actually kink and, and uh, become essentially a hook uh, on the uh, TAVR valve. So then you would then be yanking on the TAVR valve um, as you're trying to pull your catheter out. Uh, and to prevent this, uh, remember to advance a guide wire into the catheter before removing it through the valve diamond. This uh, makes it uh, less likely uh, for the catheter to kink. So uh, what did we do for this patient? Well, um, this was truly an exercise in futility. Uh, we attempted shorter catheters. First, JL3.5, then JL3, then EBU3, then AL0.75, and none were successful. We then attempted longer catheters, uh, EBU3.5, JL4. I even tried a JR4. Sometimes that works uh, for the left uh, in, with core valves. That didn't work. Uh, we tried both five French and six French catheters. Uh, I stuck uh, his uh, right radial artery and, and tried again with a Tiger 4 catheter, and that, that didn't work either. And after close to an hour, um, I was about ready to give up and refer this patient uh, to someone more skilled than me, but uh, by some divine intervention, um, we got in. A, a six French AL1 diagnostic catheter engaged the left main 
albeit extremely tenuously. And here is what we see. Um, there is a, a severe stenosis in the mid circumflex just distal to the prior stent, and that was the culprit lesion, and it needed to be fixed. So uh, what do we do now? Uh, I had such a hard time uh, even just getting a tenuous engagement that I was not confident at all uh, that I would be able to re-engage the left main uh, with the guide. So I decided that I would attempt PCI via the 6 French AL1 diagnostic catheter itself rather than a guide. And this is not as crazy uh, as it might uh, first, uh, sound at first. Um, the inner diameter of a 6 French diagnostic catheter is actually only slightly smaller uh, than the inner diameter of a 5 French guide catheter, and it is substantially larger uh, than the crossing profile of a DES. And folks in India have actually successfully done permanent PCI in a STEMI case using a 5 French uh, diagnostic uh, tiger catheter. Uh, the inner diameter there is only slightly larger uh, than the crossing profile of a DES. Um, there are obviously some potential problems uh, with using diagnostic catheters to uh, perform PCI. First, the catheter itself is, uh, is uh, less stiff, uh, so that backup is usually quite poor to non-existent, especially if your engagement is lousy in the first place. And second, because the inner diameter is smaller, you're not going to get good coronary opacification, especially if you have equipment in the coronary artery. And finally, a complex PCI is going to be out of the question. Uh, you cannot do uh, bifurcations or use a guide extension catheters. Uh, they won't, uh, the guide extension catheter simply won't fit uh, in a diagnostic catheter. Now, um, here are some tips uh, for wiring uh, with poor engagement or backup, or, or wiring with no engagement at all, uh, which is the so-called um, air mailing technique. Um, the uh, rookie move here uh, is to treat this like any other PCI and just wire with your regular workhorse wire. That usually won't work uh, because the friction uh, between uh, the workhorse wire and the vessel wall uh, will generally kick out the guide before the wire makes it even past the proximal part of the vessel. It's better uh, just to start uh, with a uh, hydrophilic wire, such as, uh, such as a Pilot 50. The uh, body of the hydrophilic wire uh, is going to be more slippery, uh, so there will be less friction with the wall of the vessel to kick the guide out. And even better, uh, use a microcatheter, such as a turnpike, along with your hydrophilic wire. Uh, this can provide support and will allow you to swap your hydrophilic wire out uh, to a more supportive wire. Now for air mailing, I also generally keep the uh, tip of my wire uh, fairly small. And sometimes a strong contrast injection uh, while you are manipulating the wire helps. Uh, the idea is that the jet of contrast will actually help float your wire to the coronary ostium. Now, um, if you did start out with a workhorse wire, and see that it's making no progress, the first thing to do is stop advancing the wire when you see the guide uh, starting to kick back. Uh, you don't want to lose that tenuous guide engagement that you worked so hard to get. Uh, there are a few options to salvage it uh, before you completely lose engagement. First, and easiest option is to uh, leave your workhorse wire in place as a buddy wire and pass a second wire next, uh, next to it, preferably a uh, hydrophilic wire. Uh, the second option is to pass a microcatheter over your workhorse wire. Uh, the microcatheter will decrease friction and increase support. If you have a short wire, uh, you can either attach a docking wire or use the trapping technique uh, to get that microcatheter in there. And the third option is to gently inflate a uh, balloon uh, at the ostium or in the proximal part of the vessel. This then acts as an anchor balloon uh, to stabilize engagement and uh, it will allow you to both pull your guide further in as well as push uh, your wire uh, more distally. And, and finally, in all of these scenarios, uh, once you have enough wire purchased, get a guide liner in there. Uh, and you can, you can do this before uh, you've really even crossed the lesion. All right, so uh, brimming with confidence now, uh, we went ahead and used our 6 French AL1 diagnostic catheter for PCI. The engagement was tenuous, uh, but we were actually fairly easily uh, uh, able to pass a uh, Pilot 50 wire uh, to the distal circumflex uh, via a Turnpike LP microcatheter. We then swapped the Pilot 50 uh, out uh, to a more supportive uh, BHW wire. 
We then attempted to pass a 2 by 12 balloon. Unfortunately, uh, that did not cross the lesion. Uh, this image is basically as far as it went. Um, the, uh, the, uh, we tried a 1.2 millimeter balloon and that couldn't cross either. Uh, the stenosis was very tight and there was a bend in the vessel. Um, Back up from our diagnostic catheter was basically non-existent. So what do we do now? We already had a supportive wire and, and the guideliner uh, won't fit. So ultimately, I thought that what we needed was a more supportive guide. I was fairly confident that we could fairly readily get through this lesion if we had a real guide and use a guide extension catheter. The problem is that I still was not at all confident that I would be able to engage uh, the left main with a guide catheter after we disengaged our diagnostic catheter. So here was my plan. I was going to swap out my diagnostic catheter to a guide catheter directly over the coronary wire. Now, exchanging catheters over coronary wires is not often done, but it is occasionally necessary. And here are some tips that I try to keep in mind. Uh, if, uh, if possible, use a supportive wire like a BHW, a Grand Slam, an Ironman, or a Wiggle. Um, in our case, uh, we already had a BHW wire in place, so we were in good shape. Now, in my experience, uh, backing out the old catheter over your coronary wire is generally not a problem. Uh, where you run into problems is when you try to advance the new catheter back in over your coronary wire. Um, as the new catheter goes around the aortic arch, uh, the coronary wire is usually not stiff enough to keep the catheter straight. The, uh, the tip of the catheter will tend to want to reform its shape, and once it does that, it, you end up, it ends up pulling your coronary wire out of the coronary. Um, to uh, prevent this from happening, I, I find it useful to lead with a balloon. In other words, advance a balloon over the wire ahead of the catheter and then follow with the catheter over the balloon shaft. The balloon shaft, in combination with your wire, will generally provide just enough support to act as a rail and keep the catheter straight. You can also do this for backing out uh, the old catheter, but again, it is, uh, it is especially important uh, to do this for advancing uh, your new catheter uh, over the coronary wire. So um, anyway, we were uh, uh, able to successfully exchange our AL1 uh, diagnostic catheter to a proper uh, 6 French EBU 3.0 guide catheter, and then we uh, inserted a guideliner uh, to further uh, stabilize our engagement, uh, and we um, should be in good shape now. So uh, with good backup, uh, the rest of the PCI became actually quite straightforward. Uh, we were able to get a 2.5 by 15 millimeter balloon across the lesion uh, for pre-dilation, and then we then stented the circ with two overlapping stents and post-dilated uh, with uh, 3.0 and 4.0 uh, millimeter NC balloons. And uh, here is the final angiographic result, uh, which we thought was uh, quite satisfactory. Uh, we started the patient on one year of DAPT, and uh, sent him home um, the following day. All right, um, take home messages. Um, so uh, coronary engagement and PCI after TAVR, uh, especially with a core valve, uh, can be very challenging. And uh, we went over some tips uh, that may help. Uh, first, uh, use a shorter catheter, for instance, a JL35 instead of a JL4, an EBU3 instead of an EBU35. Uh, if you have difficulty entering the valve diamond with a catheter, uh, advance a guide wire through the diamond first and then follow with your catheter. Uh, if you still can't engage, uh, liberal use of the air mailing technique for wiring, uh, followed uh, by an anchoring balloon and uh, followed by a guide extension catheter. Um, if um, you can get the diagnostic catheter engaged but not a guide, remember that more straightforward PCIs can be performed uh, using just a diagnostic catheter. And finally, be very careful uh, when removing your catheter through the valve, especially if you are engaging uh, from low. Um, the catheter can catch on the valve strut and kink, uh, making removal nearly impossible. Uh, to reduce the chance that this could happen, advance an O35 guide wire into the catheter first uh, before removing it uh, through the valve. Thank you for watching.